Are you currently in a specific person situation where you are not loving them from a distance? Are you currently not wishing them the best and wishing them well, even if they moved on with somebody else and you're in a third party situation right now? Well, I want you to stay tuned because this video may just rock your world. Because literally before I recorded this just a few minutes ago, we had an earthquake. So I already know this video is about to rock some of y'all and y'all might not want to hear it. What made me want to make this video is recently I was having a discussion with someone and they had asked me the question, what do they do when they are faced with intrusive thoughts of their person who is currently in a relationship or married to whoever this third party is? You know, your person has moved on, whether you were in a relationship or whether you were married or whatever the case may be, and you want them back and you see that they're with a third party and these thoughts tend to come and go. So how do you combat that? And so I gave her some of the best advice on this topic that I've ever heard from one of the goats in manifestation, in my opinion, which was from Florence Scovel Shin. Florence Scovel Shin, in my opinion, is literally heaven sent. And she has some of the best advice when it comes to manifestation in this industry, in my opinion, over the last 100 plus years. She truly does give some of the best advice on how to handle things in the 3D when you're going through them. In my opinion, studying this stuff and listening to a lot of Neville Goddard followers, I think a lot of people that follow Neville Goddard and some of the people that are teaching Neville Goddard's work, quite frankly, I think a lot of them do a terrible job at teaching people how to really deal with stuff on the surface level, on the 3D. 3D level. I've noticed many Neville followers always preach this idea of ignoring the 3D. And as I've stated in many videos in the past, I hear what they're saying and I agree with them. However, it is easier said than done. Trying to follow that advice is going to be a lot harder for a majority of the people that are following this stuff. However, Florence Scovel Shin also does a great job at explaining to us what happens when we do ignore the 3D. You see, the thing that I noticed personally about working with people one-on-one -on -one is that many people try to ignore the 3D, but what they don't realize is whatever you resist persists. And I personally find this to be how it is overwhelmingly for the majority of people who follow manifestation. Irregardless of what a manifestation coach says or a follower of Neville or any of these other YouTubers say, from what I've seen, most people, they have a very hard time with resistance. And the more they try to ignore the 3D, the more they resist, the more their current 3D persists. And I think a very big part in manifestation is learning the art of acceptance. A lot of people have a very hard time accepting the fact that their SP is no longer in the picture, their person no longer wants them, or their person has moved on, got to another relationship, gotten married, or whatever the case may be. I know a lot of you Neville people out there aren't gonna like this, but I think acceptance is part of the healing process and part of the manifestation process that will eventually come to fruition for you for the better in the future. So you must accept the fact that your person has moved on. Don't try to fight that feeling because it's going to persist if you continue to fight it and it's gonna make you worse and your situation worse. And I know this is a hard pill to swallow for many of you out there, but let me get ready to get into what Florence Scovel Shin said in her book and the chapter of The Law of Non-Resistance. Hopefully us dissecting this chapter will help you understand where I'm coming from when I tell you to stop resisting whatever your current situation is with whatever person that you're dealing with, as well as I hope this helps you understand why I told this person what I'm getting ready to go over with you guys. So the law of non-resistance chapter reads as follows. Nothing on earth can resist an absolutely non-resistant person. The Chinese say that the water is the most powerful element because it is perfectly non-resistant. It can wear away a rock and sweep all before Jesus Christ said, resist not evil. For he knew in the reality there is no evil, therefore nothing to resist. Evil has come of man's vain imagination or a belief in two powers, good and evil. There is an old legend that Adam and Eve ate of the Maya, the tree of illusion, and saw two powers instead of one power, God. Therefore, evil is false. Law man has made for himself through psychoma or soul sleep. Soul sleep means that man's soul has been hypnotized by race belief of sin, sickness, and death, which is carnal or mortal thought, and his affairs have outpictured his illusions. We have read in a preceding chapter that man's soul is his subconscious mind, and whatever he feels deeply good or bad is outpictured by the faithful servant, his body and affairs show forth what he has been picturing. The sick man has pictured sickness, the poor man poverty, the rich man wealth. People often say, why does a little child attract illness when it is too young to even know what it means? I answer the children are sensitive and receptive to the thoughts of others about them and often outpicture the fears of their parents. 
I heard a metaphysician once say, if you do not run your subconscious mind yourself, someone else will run it for you. Mothers often unconsciously attract illnesses and disasters to their children by continually holding them in thoughts of fear and watching for symptoms. For example, a friend asked the woman if her little girl had the measles. She replied promptly, not yet. This implied that she was expecting the illness and therefore preparing the way for what she did not want for herself and child. However, the man who is centered and established in right thinking, the man who sends out only goodwill to his fellow man and who is without fear cannot be touched or influenced by the negative thoughts of others. In fact, he could then receive only good thoughts as he himself sends forth only good thoughts. Resistance is hell, for it places man in a state of torment. A metaphysician once gave me a wonderful recipe for taking every trick in the game of life. It is the acme of non-resistance. He gave it in this way. At one time in my life, I baptized children. And of course, they had many names. Now I no longer baptize children, but I baptize events. But I give every event the same name. If I have a failure, I baptize it success in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In this, we see the great law of transmutation founded on non-resistance. Through his spoken word, every failure was transmuted into success. For example, a woman who required money and who knew the spiritual law of opulence was thrown continually in a business way with a man who made her feel very poor. He talked lack and limitation and she commenced to catch his poverty thoughts. So she disliked him and blamed him for her failure. She knew in order to demonstrate her supply, she must first feel that she had received. The feeling of opulence must precede its manifestation. It dawned upon her one day that she was resisting the situation and seeing two powers instead of one. So she blessed the man and baptized the situation's success. She affirmed, as there is only one power, God, this man is here for my good and my prosperity. Just what he did not seem to be there for. Soon after that, she met, through this man, a woman who gave her, for a service rendered, several thousand dollars. And the man moved to a distant city and faded harmoniously from her life. Make the statement, every man is a golden link in my chain of good, for all men are God in a manifestation, awaiting the opportunity given by man himself to serve the divine plan of his life. Bless your enemy, and you rob him of ammunition. His arrows will be transmuted into blessings. This law is true of nations as well as individuals. Bless a nation, send love and goodwill to every inhabitant, and it is robbed of its power to harm. Man can only get the right idea of non-resistance through spiritual understanding. My students have often said, I don't want to be a doormat. I reply, when you use non-resistance with wisdom, no one will ever be able to walk over you. A key passage I want to read because I want to fast forward through this passage. I want to read this to you. So long as a man resists the situation, he will have it with him. If he runs away from it, it will run after him. That means agree the adverse situation is good, be undisturbed by it, and it falls away of its own weight. None of these things move me is a wonderful affirmation. The inharmonious situation comes from some inharmony within man himself. When there is in him no emotional response to an inharmonious situation, it fades away forever from his pathway. So we see man's work is ever within himself. People have said to me, give me treatments to change my husband or my brother. I reply, no. I will give you treatments to change you. When you change, your husband and your brother will change. Lauren Scovel Shin is really the triple OG of this manifestation stuff. The godmother. In my opinion, this was great advice to follow on a 3D level of how to deal with these situations and circumstances when they arrive with whatever person. But let me fast forward a little bit to the chapter of love from Florence Scovel Shin's book to give you the perfect example of what I told this person that I was working with one-on-one -on -one to help them with their situation when it comes to thinking and having intrusive thoughts about a third party. All of you people in a third party situation, whether you're married or unmarried, pay attention. For example, a woman came to me in deep distress. The man she loved had left her for another woman and said he never intended to marry her. She was torn with jealousy and resentment and said she hoped he would suffer as he made her suffer and added, how could he leave me when I loved him so much? I replied, you are not loving that man. You are hating him and added, you can never receive what you have never given. Give a perfect love and you will receive a perfect love. Perfect yourself on this man. Give him a perfect, unselfish love, demanding nothing in return. Do not criticize or condemn and bless him wherever he is. She replied, no, I won't bless him unless I know where he is. Well, I said, that is not real love. When you send out real love, real love will return to you, either from this man or his equivalent. For if this man is not the divine selection, you will not want him, as you are one with God. You are one 
who have the love which belongs to you by divine right. Several months passed and matters remained about the same, but she was working conscientiously with herself. I said, when you are no longer disturbed by his cruelty, he will cease to be cruel, as you are attracting it through your own emotions. Then I told her of a brotherhood in India who never said good morning to each other. They used these words, I salute the divinity in you. They saluted the divinity in every man and in the wild animals and the jungle, and they were never harmed, for they saw only God in every living thing. I said, salute the divinity in this man and say, I see your divine self only. I see you as God sees you, perfect, made in his image and likeness. She found she was becoming more poised and gradually losing her resentment. He was a captain, and she always called him the cap. One day she said suddenly, God bless the cap, wherever he is. I replied, now, that is real love. And when you have become a complete circle and are no longer disturbed by the situation, you will have his love or attract its equivalent. I was moving at this time and did not have a telephone, so I was out of touch with her for a few weeks. When one morning I received a letter saying, we are married. At the earliest opportunity, I paid her a call. My first words were, what happened? Oh, she exclaimed, a miracle. One day I woke up and all suffering had ceased. I saw him that evening and he asked to marry me. We were married in about a week and I have never seen a more devoted man. There is an old saying, no man is your enemy, no man is your friend. Every man is your teacher. So one should become impersonal and learn what each man has to teach him. And soon he would learn his lessons and be free. The woman's lover was teaching her selfless love, which every man sooner or later must learn. Suffering is not necessary for man's development. It is the result of violation of spiritual law, but few people seem able to rouse themselves from their soul sleep without it. When people are happy, they usually become selfish and automatically the law of karma is set in action. Man often suffers loss through lack of appreciation. I know a woman who had a very nice husband, but she said often, I don't care anything about being married but that is nothing against my husband. I'm simply not interested in married life. She had other interests and scarcely remembered she had a husband. She only thought of him when she saw him. One day her husband told her he was in love with another woman and left. She came to me in distress and resentment. I replied, it is exactly what you spoke the word for. You said you didn't care anything about being married, so the subconscious worked to get you unmarried. She said, oh, yes, I see. People get what they want and then feel very much hurt. She soon became in perfect harmony with the situation and knew they were both much happier apart. When a woman becomes indifferent or critical and ceases to be an inspiration to her husband, he misses the stimulus of their early relationship and is restless and unhappy. The master has spoken once again. Personally, I just think Florence is spot on with everything that she said. And I know a lot of law of assumption people don't agree with Florence Scovel Shen or don't follow her. But personally, on a 3D level, her advice in getting through life and how to manage things when it happens on a 3D level, to me, is really second to none. Everything she literally just said in that passage is what I said to this person that I was working with one-on-one. -on -one. This person came to me and asked me, what do I do when I have those intrusive thoughts of my old specific person when he's with his new person in his new marriage? And I literally told him exactly what Florence said. I had mentioned if you really love this person, you're not going to be wishing them bad. You're not going to be hating and resenting the fact that they are with another party, that they are with somebody else, especially when they probably don't even want to be with this new person. Because in this specific situation, the person, there's a third party in the picture. The old SP doesn't even really want to be with this third party situation. In my mind, and what I told this person was, it's a matter of time before they break up because we already know that this person doesn't even want to be with whoever this new person is that they're with that they married. But these arranged marriage situations are crazy. So if you were in a situation where you are dealing with a third party and there is an arranged marriage, being that divorce rates are already high in the world, I personally wouldn't even worry about a third party coming into the situation, especially if it's an arranged marriage, because there's a high probability that those two people don't even want to be together because that is exactly what the situation is in this case that I'm telling you about. The person's third party doesn't even want to be with the current wife that they're with. And so it literally is just a matter of time before that thing blows up. But what I told her in the meantime, between time, just bless the situation, bless him, bless her. Because a lot of times what we don't realize is third parties in these types of situations are usually innocent. Third parties usually a lot of times, they're not trying to be nefarious. They just show up for whatever the reason, whether you attracted it subconsciously or whatever the case may be. I mean, Florence Scovel Shin literally just gave us a perfect example in her book of how a wife always used to say, I'm not really interested in being married, even though she was married. 
And look, she got herself unmarried based on her thoughts and the words that she spoke about being married. And then when it happened, she was kind of like dumbfounded. Oh, I can't believe this happened. And then once Florence broke it down for her, she totally understood why it happened. So like Florence said in her book, you have jealousy and resentment towards a person leaving you for a third party. Don't wish that person harm. Don't wish the third party harm because you're not loving that person and you're not transmuting that. You are resisting the situation instead of accepting the situation. And like we mentioned earlier, whatever you resist is what's going to persist. So it's important that quick, fast, and in a hurry, you look at a situation, whatever that situation may be that you're going through in your life, you look at that situation and say, you know what? This is what it is. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to be grateful. I'm going to bless this. I'm going to baptize this situation success no matter what has happened in the past because every man is a golden link in my chain of good.